Hey, this is Donnie Smith, and in this video, I'm going to go over the technical data sheet for the epoxy. This is the shop line epoxy. So follow along with my computer, and we'll go over it. And, and also, I'll have a technical data sheet available for you down in the description. If you want to click there, you can read along with this, or if you're needing it for the epoxy primer. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay, hopefully you can see this fine. If not, I'm going to explain it to you. So if you're going to use epoxy, shop lines epoxy, this will help out. Let you know exactly the air pressure and uh, how many coats and all that that is that are, are needed. So this is the shop line epoxy. First, uh, about the background, uh, it's a two-component non-chrome coating designed to provide superior corrosion protection and adhesion when applying over properly cleaned and sanded bare metal, fiberglass, and painted surfaces. Now, on this technical data sheet, it says uh, JP37X. That's because there's different ones. They've, you've got a white, you've got a gray, and a black. The white is 371, the gray is JP375, and the, and the black is JP377. Uh, that's the only difference is the colors. Okay, so let's talk about what this can be applied over and what you can apply on top of it. What are the compatible surfaces? And that's the good thing about epoxy is it is real compatible. So it can be applied on cleaned, sanded bare or prime steel, galvanized and aluminum, sanded and cleaned body filler, cured, clean and sanded OEM and refinished coatings. So specifically it can be applied over primer surfacer, polyester primer filler, acrylic primer, urethane surface, plastic adhesion promoter or 2K sealers. So this can be applied over a lot of different products. So the products that can be applied on top of this, you can overcoat with these products. So in other words, if you have epoxy, what can go on top? And that is primer surfacer, polyester primer filler, acrylic primer, urethane surfacer, sealer, base coat, acrylic urethane base coat, acrylic enamel, acrylic enamel activated, and direct glossed acrylic urethane. So there's a wide range of products that can be applied on top of this. And for preparation, of course, wash it with uh, soap and water and use a wax and grease remover. Gives their specific brands here. If you want to click in the description below to see that. But it says that sanding needs to be sanded 120 to 180 grit if it's bare metal. Now, if it's old finished or body fillers, it needs to be sanded with 220 to 320 before applying this uh, epoxy. Okay, the mixing ratio. This mixes two parts epoxy primer to one part catalyst. So there's going to be two parts of the epoxy to one part catalyst. And for example, if you have two ounces of epoxy, that would be one ounce of catalyst. Or if you have four ounces of epoxy, that'd be two ounces of catalyst. It says allow a 15 minute induction period before applying. And so it needs 15 minutes for that to set after it's mixed before you use it. The pot life, eight hours at 70 degrees. And what that is, is how long do you have to use that in the gun before it starts gelling up and you have to get rid of it. So you have eight hours, which is a long time. Most products don't give you eight hours like that. So an eight hour pot life. Additives, you can use acetone up to 10% if you need to. Okay, application. This is actually applying it, the coats. It says one to two coats. Air pressure, HVLP is eight to 10 pounds at the air cap. And again, that is at the air cap, not down on the gun regulator. That's a little bit confusing, but if you're setting it at a gun re regulator on the gun, depending on the gun you're using, probably anywhere from 20 to 30 PSI. If it's a conventional gun, which there's not a whole lot of those anymore, those are kind of outlawed, but it'd be 45 to 50 PSI. Gun setup. So to shoot this, uh, they recommend a 1.3 to 1.6 gun size. Dry times, one coat, 15 minutes at 70, two coats, 30 minutes at 70. So if you apply one coat, you need to wait 15 minutes before you apply your primer surfacer or paint or whatever it is you're spraying. If you apply two coats, you need to wait 30 minutes. Tape time is a minimum of six hours. 
and this epoxy primer must be scuffed and reapplied if allowed to stand more than three days. So if it's been more than 72 hours, three days, you need to scuff and reapply because you lose your chemical adhesion. So you need to sand it to provide that mechanical adhesion. So clean up, they recommend to clean your guns and your equipment thoroughly with JR Reducer, JT501 general purpose solvents, or other appropriate cleanup solvents after each use. Follow EP guidelines for proper storage and disposal of solvent-borne waste paint. And then it also gives a lot of the VOCs, you know, the weights and things like that. Uh, I'm not going to go over that, but again, if uh, you want to look at this in more detail, uh, I know it's probably hard to see on the video there, but uh, you can go down here in the description and you can click there and get this for yourself. And I recommend reading these technical data sheets before using any product. So if you're using the shop line epoxy, go down in the description and click and you can look, find all this information for yourself right before you spray. Because chances are if you don't do this often, you may forget. So thanks for watching this video. If you like it, be sure and let me know by giving us a like, a thumbs up. I hope it helps and also be sure to subscribe because I'm going to be posting more of these on different products.